been a while since I've given any sort of update on the whole anorexia thing. I would say that eating wise I've um, kind of once they got better um, basically I've just moved house again and um, like the whole everything being so out of place and unorganized um, is I I've always hated not having things organized and tidy and so that stressing me out um, something else that's also stressing me out which isn't helping my situation is the fact that I start my final year at university in two weeks and it really doesn't help that my house is just a complete and utter mess so eating wise the fact that I am stressed um, has made me want to eat more uh, shit like junk food and stuff um, however brain wise um, I've been smoking a lot more I usually used to have like 9, 10 a day I've been having about 13, 14 and that's just because my brain the way that my anorexia works is that I feel like if I smoke then it's okay to eat because smoking increases my metabolism and if I really don't want to eat then I smoke more to kill my appetite does that make sense so like I eat before and after each and every meal and like when I eat rubbish like my brain just goes like crazy like the day after I eat something bad like I all of a sudden feel like I've put on weight which is in impossible like you don't put on two three stones in 24 hours unless you're Violet from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory but that's completely different but yeah the way I've been trying to counteract those thoughts of oh, I'm eating it's bad it's by smoking more which as I mentioned in my first recovery video I have asthma <laughs> so smoking more has really like been putting a lot of pressure on my lungs like I've been wheezing a lot um, like I can't take in like, uh, like deep breaths it just it hurts but yeah that's my update at the moment before I moved and before I started eating loads of shit as I have been recently I um I was doing slightly better like before I'd only have one meal a day before I moved and I started eating rubbish um I'd have one meal and a little snack which is a little better considering before I even started getting help I was surviving on almost nothing every day I feel like for me it's just it's frustrating but at the same time it's hard to explain like I want help and I want to fix it but at the same time like my my anorexia in the back of my head's like but if you fix it you're gonna put that weight on so it's quite frustrating in my head to just go like back and forth like I want help but I don't want help I want help but I don't want help I want to get better but I don't want to get better but I found that it's important for me to be patient with myself and to work on one thing at a time like I've been wanting to quit smoking for a while because of my asthma but I can't I tried I went three days and my head went nuts I just couldn't focus all I all I could think about like the entirety of those three days was I need a cigarette I need food but I can't eat 
and there's nothing to suppress like my desire to want to eat like everything right now and so like constantly for three days it was just I need to smoke I don't want to eat I need to smoke I don't want to eat and like I feel like maybe it's just like a head and maybe it's just a mental thing but like I feel like when I smoke it is easier for me not to eat and not to have to worry about my anorexia because I feel like and this is probably in my head but I feel like my, anore my anorexia smoking does prevent me from putting on weight so I'm kind of like okay I can eat I'm not saying it prevents to put on weight obviously there are bigger people who do smoke but like for me what I found and it's actually scientifically proven that smoking increases your metabolism and suppresses your appetite and that's exactly what I use smoking for and obviously like the stress factor the stress reduction factor of it but um no I've been wanting to quit and I, I can't my anorexia won't let me because when I try it's just like you have nothing to speed up your metabolism and to like keep this food like from you know sticking I, I don't know it probably doesn't make sense but that's the way my my head's been functioning so I've just been like if, if I focus on my anorexia first and then quit smoking it won't be a problem and that's what I mean by focusing on one thing at a time like if you have several things going on that you want to change just focus on the one that prevents you from fixing all the other little problems So, I probably look like, I can't even talk, <laughs> I probably look like crap because I feel like crap it is at the moment, I look at the weather, oh yeah my neighbours are doing some construction work, it is 16 degrees and I'm freezing because I have quit smoking and the withdrawal symptoms feel like death. I think the worst part was two nights ago when um and like this happened at like quite an awkward time because I was um like FaceTiming my girlfriend and like I started to get like a really hot like flush I was just like oh my gosh I'm so hot and I like, started like taking my jumper off and like taking off like the covers of my bed and stuff because I was in my bed while I was FaceTiming her like she was just like are you okay and I was like I just feel really hot right now and then like my tummy started to feel really weird and like I started shaking and I was just like okay something is wrong so like I woke up on my mom and I was like, Mom, something's up. <laughs> Something is very wrong right now. And um Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't stop shaking and then the next minute I was really, really, really cold. And then I was really, really, really hot again and then I was really, really cold and I started feeling like really sick and then I I like threw up like a lot. Um yeah, so that was the worst night and I couldn't sleep that night at all. And then like my hypochondria started to play up and I was like, oh my god, my appendix is gonna like explode. <laughs> but no, I was just withdrawal symptoms. Um then the day after I felt a little bit better, but like still felt kinda crappy and today I still feel kinda crappy. And like my veins feel really weird. Like, look, everything's just, it's not usually like this, like, my veins aren't usually like this visible or like prominent. Yeah, look at that, that's just, 
Personally, I don't think that looks very healthy, but um, I probably shouldn't have that around my wrist. Um, but yeah, like I can feel like my veins like pulsating, and like they like feel really tingly, and like sometimes like when the blood is flowing through them, like at that moment, like it will hurt. And, I, and uh, like I was reading up about it, and apparently it's just like my body readjusting to having like oxygenated blood again <laughs> oh so fun and my tummy like has been in like some serious amounts of pain and like I don't know if it's like withdrawal symptoms or if it's like my IBS or like both of the, th the things just mixed together but it's been really painful I haven't been able to take a proper crap in days <laughs> fun I like I was getting kind of worried about like my veins hurting um so like I called up like NHS um hotline and they were just like yeah uh does your body feel really hot and I was like yeah <laughs> yeah they're like do your hands feel really cold and I was like yeah they're like yeah uh you need to go see your GP like immediately so I'm waiting for it to be like one o'clock so that I can call and like get an emergency appointment but um yeah that's what I'm what I'm going through right now I feel so cold and look I've got two layers of clothes on I'm underneath this and I just feel so cold and like I have headaches and like my vision goes blurry from time to time I don't know why that is but it's really weird I'm sure, like, hopefully in like a few weeks I'll be like, on top of the world again, but for now, like, most of the people that watch my videos tend to be like family or friends or like people that, um, like know me, like at uni and stuff, so like, um, do me a favour and like, if you see me like, holding a cigarette, please just feel free to beat me up, just... I don't ever want to do that again, but like if I become tempted and I like grab one or something, just feel free to free to hit me like to beat me up because I don't ever want to feel like this again. I'd much appreciate that. So I'm just sitting here and thinking about life and thinking about the inevitability of death and I already knew this but I've come to the conclusion that life's tough I think I think the problem is we have too many choices we have too many choices there are people who tell us that we should do this and then there are other people who should tell us we should do that this is good for you, this is bad for you and then, in my predicament at the moment, quitting smoking. Um, obsessed with my weight. Obsessed with my health. I'm just thinking, so what do I, what do I listen to? And also I've, I've had IBS since I was well, probably since always, but I was only diagnosed with it when I was 12, and, um, it's really the only reason why I quit smoking, because they just don't go together. And I'm also having to give up another thing that I absolutely love, which is drinking coffee, but my stomach just can't handle the stimulant, and this probably sounds like such a first world problem, but... What's the meaning of life? For us to grow. That's one. For us to learn. To become knowledgeable. To learn about ourselves as individuals, as beings. To learn about our position in this world. To find happiness. What brings us happiness? What can we do to aid in our search for happiness? 
love and family, being useful, having a purpose, having something to do. Now if we go back to happiness, smoking brought me a lot of happiness, kept me calm, I loved the taste. My stomach can't handle it and it's probably going to kill me. Coffee, again, my stomach can't handle it. But it brought me happiness. Loved the taste. Kept, kept me, you know, excited. Energetic. Fueled. And then I tried to do what's good for me. Eat loads of fruits and vegetables. And my stomach still hurts. Turns out there are several fruits and vegetables that my IBS just can't handle either. So even trying to be healthy is a limitation for me. Good. Good. Just more limits. And then it's like my anorexia is also being fucked because if if I don't have several meals throughout the day, I'm also going to have pain. But if I have several meals throughout the day, I get scared I'm going to get fat again. So now I guess what I have to do is figure out what's more important, I guess. My weight or my health. It feels like my brain is like divided. And like one of them saying your health is more important but then the other side of my brain is like, no, no, no. Your weight is more important.